Hi everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Fabia Mantwell, Berlin-based composer, arranger, saxophonist, and vocalist. Fabia is here to show us how to arrange an original song with lyrics. Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for tuning in. So in this mini lesson, I want to give you an overview or a guideline about different steps that I find very helpful when arranging or orchestrating an original song. This might be either your own composition or a commission that you get. Um, and also at the end, we'll have a quick look into one of my orchestral arrangements as well. Um, so here comes a little overview that I made for you with the uh, different steps that I'm kind of working through when arranging a song. Um, the first step is the most important step. Um, I call it the open, playful and creative face. Uh, so for this one, basically you sit down uh, in a quiet space, you listen to the original composition a few times with very fresh ears and try to listen with an open approach as being childlike. Because um, this is about being curious, about being relaxed, playful, open-minded, um, ready to explore and let go of any other thoughts or duties of this day and just focus on this moment. Um, while listening, I'll take a big piece of paper and I start mind mapping different ideas, um, which could potentially look like this. So this is a very rough sketch um, of uh, one arrangement that I did. Um, so what do I write down? I'll write down ideas for clear musical concepts, uh, harmonically, melodically, or about instrumentation. I also write down possible ideas for highlights in the music, um, particularly also when you have a look at the lyrics. Is there anything that you want to emphasize and how could this come together in the form of the piece? Um, also, is there any important parts to be explored or maybe parts that could allow you some more freedom for an improvised free part or something like this? Um, then what I also find really interesting is to do a sketch, like a graphic or a curve of the piece, um, which uh, could look like this. Um, this is really helpful for the form, I find, um, particularly also um, if you want to come up with ideas to highlight or like to write a tutti at the end, in the middle, or to start big. Um, and what I also personally find very, very uh, interesting is to think about colors and textures, especially if there's lyrics to the song or if there's a clear story to the piece as well. Um, so how could I underline and emphasize that story with musical elements? There's a very great YouTube video that I highly recommend watching. It's by the English screenwriter, actor, and co-founder of uh, the Mountain Python, uh, Monty Python movies. Um, and uh, it's called John Cleese on Creativity in Management. And he talks about basically two different modes we're in. Um, this first mode that we're in for this first step, which is called the open mode. And then there's also a closed mode, which I'm going to refer to later. So the second step uh, is, if it's not your own composition, to transcribe the original piece um, in form of lead sheets um, with just a very important information, just like melody, harmony, and lyrics. Um, the third step is to map out concrete ideas in that transcription chart you did. And um, yeah, I personally like to also print out just a chart with the lyrics and note down ideas just in that lyric chart as well because this gives you a much better overview about uh, the form, I find. But um, yeah, I also brought some some chart I did. So you can see, like, I noted down some, like, I marked some words and I, you know, like, I, I put in some some rough notes of things that I, I find really helpful and um, that I've, I, th I think would be cool. Um, then you would do a detailed party shell or also miniature score. Um, so for this one, be as clear and as detailed as needed, but also keep in mind to really only focus on the essential musical ideas. Um, this includes or might include instrumentation. It might include particular harmonic ideas or like very special voicings you want to use counterpoints or melodies and um, yeah, what else? I mean, optional, you can also do a form chart, which uh, 
I sometimes do and it looks quite is a lot of pages but anyways like I would I would note down like different sections of the form and then um, put those bar numbers and then have a better overview about um, the overall form of the piece. Uh, and then the last, almost last step is to write the full orchestral score, which is quite a technical task. So if you listen to this John Cleese video, he calls it uh, the closed mode. And it's usually the, the mode we're in when we're actively working. It can be a bit stressful, we can be a bit tense, but uh, it's really about fulfilling the goal. And musically speaking, this is about putting your creative ideas into practice. And if there, if it's possible, it's always very, very cool to revisit the piece after a few days, or weeks, or even months. Um, especially if you want to record it, maybe for an album. I, it's it, it can be a pain sometimes, but I personally made the experience that that is a really, really cool thing to do. To finish up the lesson, I would like to have a brief look into one of my orchestral arrangements I did of a Becca Stevens song called Ophelia. Um, I will give you a few more insights about this piece in my composer spotlight, but let's have a look into the beginning of the piece and some of the musical choices I took. So this piece, um, Ophelia, is about a Shakespearean-inspired protagonist, Ophelia, who wanders in the woods with a broken heart um, and she throws herself into the sea perhaps to depart life, perhaps to be reborn. Um, and at this point, the song moves into its second chapter um, and a man appears, a knight uh, shattered from war. And as he goes to wash his, sea, uh, his face in the sea, he sees the ghost of Ophelia and falls in love with her. Um, so to start off the beginning and to create this atmosphere for the listener, which is like kind of a vague, a blurry and a magical atmosphere, um, quite undefined and far away, I, I, I choose to start with flageolets for the strings. Then the harp comes in with uh, quite a strange melody, um, which is a sign that Ophelia appears. And then when we have a look at the lyrics, uh, they say she wandered out into the belly of the woods. And at this part, I choose the woodwinds as the leading section and the brass is blending in with buckets to create this wooden sound. Um, then there's other lyrics saying that once beat in her heart. For this part, I choose to uh, have a subtle heartbeat pattern, which continues in the beginning. And then there's some more lyrics saying uh, the sleeping man. And for this one, I uh, decided to use a very clear harmonic uh, structure um, to create this peaceful and um, yeah, sleepy atmosphere. Mm, and then um, having a pending fragile atmosphere continuing, I choose to pair harp, pizzicato strings and vibraphone. I do invite you to have a listen to the Becca Stevens original version of the song and also compare it to the orchestral version I did for my orchestra, which you can also hear uh, on our album release last year. It's called Imperience. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you want to know more about this particular piece about storytelling and how to convey it uh, through the music, um, tune in for the Composer Spotlight. 
Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full length events and participate in live Q and A's with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.